Hi, everybody. We meet again. So good to see you. <clears throat> we will get started in five minutes. Okay. Anybody here yet? Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, yes. Ian and Erica are here. Hi. <clears throat> and Alana is here. And Maddie and Julie and Josh are here. And the Druckmann gang and Abby and Jeremy and Kinsey and <laughs> Wellesley and Teddy and Dylan and Braden are here. And Annie. Hi, Annie. Um, oh, dear. They're coming by so fast. I can't read them. <laughs> and Dennis is here and Henry and and Emma and Taylor and uh, the, ga the, the Grandster, the Grandster, Liam and Margo and Camilla and Zach and Shannon. Hi to all of you. Thanks for joining us. We're going to have some fun today. Today is the the last day of Mr. Will needs to chill, and Ryan is here. And uh, hi to Dylan and Milo and Gabriel and Caleb, Hudson and Cooper. Thanks to all of you for coming. Jack, hi Jack, and uh, Elise and Drew are here. So glad you came. We'll get started in four minutes. Hi Christian and Jack and Ben and Reese and and uh, Tyler and Darcy, Brooklyn and Rhea and uh, Max and Sam and Nolan and Zoe. Thanks for coming by. We're going to have so much fun. So glad you came again. Alina, Jack and John and Theo from Ontario, Canada. <clears throat> Leo's here and uh, Lila, Marco and Mia. Uh, Daniel's here and Ellie from Illinois and Braden and Chloe. Come on in. Call your cousins across the country and get your friends on the phone because we have three more minutes before we're going to go live and, and start the reading. Okay. So Sandy, Stacy, and Daniel are here. <clears throat> Taryn, Jackson, hi. So glad you all came. Burke family is in the house. Thank you. Aaron, and Eden, and <clears throat> Shelby Hadley, and Brady, and James, and Clara, and uh, Addison in North Carolina. Uh, I wish I could read that joke, Joanne, but it went by too fast. Genevieve and Virginia and Lucas and Allison and, and uh, Harrison are here. And Lainey and Ellie are here. I'm so glad you're all here. I wouldn't do this otherwise. <laughs> it would be dumb for me to just sit here and talk and read books to nobody. Uh, Sam and Gavin are here. And Avery and Emerson and uh, Garrett and Lucas and Logan are here. We'll get started in two minutes. Two minutes minutes. <clears throat> Alexandria is here. Uh, and Claire. <clears throat> and I'm sorry that I can't say all your names. Uh, and once we get started, obviously, if you if you say your name, I, I'm not reading anymore. Once we get started, I, I mean, I'm, I'm reading the book, but I'm not reading your comments as they scroll by once I get started. Uh, let me take a sip. Nora, Nolan, Shelby, Spencer, Zoe, Emma, and Lila, <clears throat> Lucas, thanks for joining me. Hope you're enjoying the book so far. Today's the big surprise ending. Kratzer Kids, Kaylee, Christian. <clears throat> Two minutes. Uh, Leah and Justin are back for the big finale. Okay. Start a new book on Monday. Oh, one more minute. Happy Friday, Chris and Josh. Same to you. John's and Evan. Okay. Okay. We can, get, we can get rid of this. Don't need to hold this anymore because we're going to get started in less than one minute. <clears throat> I'm excited. You guys excited? Molly, David, you excited? I hope so. <laughs> How about you, Sophia, Elliot? Almost time. What is that noise outside? <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, my cat is here. Hi. Oh, <laughs> she doesn't want to come up. Come on up. Come on up, popcorn. Come here. Come here. Come. Oh. It's go time, baby. Hi, 
My name is Dan Gutman. I am the author of the My Weird School series and uh, happy Friday. Today it's time for our big surprise ending of the book we've been reading all week. But before we get to that, let's do our question of the day first, which is from Ava from Villa Rica, Georgia. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Villa Rica. And um, Ava's question was, which subject did you like better in school, reading or math? Why or why not? Uh, I'll tell you, Ava, um, I, math was always my toughest subject in school. I was not good in math. Um, words always came naturally to me. So I was better in, in reading in English, even though I wasn't a big reader myself, but writing came naturally to me. And I remember when I was a kid, the calculators didn't exist back then. And I remember when calculators were first invented and I lived in New Jersey and a friend of mine and I, we took a bus into New York City specifically because he wanted to buy a calculator. You had to go into New York to a special store to buy a calculator. That shows how old I was, I, how old I am. Anyway, let's get back to Mr. Will, our book of the week. Okay, here it is. And we're gonna read the, the, the final chapter here. Up until now, you know, Mr. Will is the ice cream man and uh, mean Dr. Carbles kicked him out of the, the school. He wouldn't let them let him come. And Mr. Will has kind of disappeared. So the last few chapters, some other ice cream man came to the school. There was a Mr. Bill who was insisting on teaching math problems while he was selling ice cream. Then there was Mr. Mill who, uh, he wouldn't sell you ice cream unless he gave you a little history lesson first. And then there was Mr. Hill, Hill, who, who insisted on giving you a science lesson while you were getting your ice cream. And now we're getting to chapter nine, the last chapter in the book, which conveniently is titled The Big Surprise Ending. Okay, so you guys ready? Gather around the smartphone, the tablet, the laptop, the big screen TV, and we're gonna get started with the big surprise ending. Okay, here we go. We got the ice cream every day. Chocolate, marshmallow, vanilla, fudge, ripple, cookies and cream, you name it. It was the greatest week of my life. You would think that everybody would have been happy, but when we were eating lunch in the vomitorium on Friday, Friday, Andrea had on her worried face. And here's a picture of the kids at lunchtime. Jim is so tired of drawing the same lunch, lunchtime picture over and over again. Andrea had on her worried face. What's the matter, I asked her. Did they cancel your clog dancing class after school today? Clog dancing is a dance that plumbers do. Andrea takes classes in everything after school so she can show off how good she is. If they gave classes in toenail clipping, she would take that class so she could get better at it. I just don't get it, Andrea said. I don't understand why Mr. Klutz is giving away money so we can buy ice cream. Grown-ups don't just hand out dollar bills to kids. It's not normal. I was wondering that myself, said Ryan. And why is there a different guy driving the ding-dong truck every day? Yeah, and why are all the ding-dong guys so weird? Asked Michael. Maybe they went crazy listening to the ding-dong jingle all day, guessed Neil. It does have that effect on grown-ups. That's it. I couldn't take it anymore. I stood up. What is wrong with you people? I shouted at them. I can't believe you're complaining. We're getting free ice cream every day. First thing in the morning. Just enjoy it. I do enjoy it, Arlo, said Andrea, but I'm suspicious. I think these ding dong guys have some kind of a racket going. Huh? What did tennis have to do with anything? You guys are nuts, I told them. As long as I get free ice cream every day, I'm happy. We all went back to eating our lunch. Nobody said anything for a while. But let me ask you this, Arlo, Andrea finally said. What do you think happened to Mr. Will? 
the first ding dong man. He hasn't been here all week. Hmm. Good question. What did happen to Mr. Will? Yeah, said Neil. It's like he vanished off the face of the earth. Maybe Mr. Will moved away, guessed Alexia. Or maybe he got a new ding dong route or route or route. I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> maybe he got fired, guessed Neil. Maybe he got kidnapped, Ryan guessed. Yeah, I said. Maybe all those ding dong guys are fake ding dong guys who wanted jobs with the ding dong company. So they kidnapped Mr. Will, locked him up in a ding dong truck, and pushed the truck over a cliff. That stuff happens all the time, you know. And here's a picture of <laughs> a ding dong truck going over the cliff <laughs> that has been pushed by the other ding dong men. <laughs> Stop trying to scare Emily, said Andrea. I'm scared, said Emily. Maybe Mr. Will is. I waited until everybody was looking at me before I finished the sentence. Dead. We've got to do something, Emily shouted. And then she went running out of the room. Sheesh, get a grip. That girl will fall for anything. But for once in her life, Emily was right. We did have to do something. We had to find out what was going on. After lunch, instead of playing outside during recess, we decided to go to Mr. Klutz's office. If anybody knew what was going on, it would be Mr. Klutz. We walked down the hall to his office. When we got there, Mr. Klutz was sitting at his desk. He was eating an ice cream sandwich. Here's a picture of Mr. Klutz at his desk eating an ice cream sandwich. Hey guys, he said when he saw us, have you been enjoying your ding dong ice cream? Yes, Andrea said, but we're worried about something. What is it? asked Mr. Klutz. Did the ding dong truck run out of octopus push up pops again? No, said Andrea. We want to know why there's a different ding dong guy every day. And why are you giving away money to buy ice cream? What's really going on? Mr. Klutz didn't say anything for a while. It was like he was trying to decide how to respond. Okay, I admit it, Mr. Klutz finally said. Mr. Bill and Mr. Hill and Mr. Mill are not real ding dong guys. I knew it, Andrea shouted. When I was at principal camp last week, Mr. Klutz told us, I found out that kids can learn a lot when they're not in a classroom. You can learn everywhere. So I hired teachers to work in the ding dong truck and pretend to be ding dong guys. I thought it would help you learn math, history, science, and other subjects. It did help us, I told him. I learned lots of new stuff. Did you know that during the Roman Empire, Marco Polo came home and brought ice cream for George Washington's birthday party? I'm not sure that's true, AJ, said Mr. Klutz. Wait a minute, said Andrea, said Andrea. Bringing in fake ding dong guys is sort of like lying to us, isn't it? Yes, Mr. Klutz admitted quietly. I suppose you're right. Lying isn't nice, Andrea told him. We're not supposed to tell lies. You're right, Andrea, said Mr. Klutz. But I was trying to help you kids learn. And you did. You got to eat lots of ice cream, too. So everybody comes out a winner, right? Well, there's one person who didn't come out a winner, said Andrea. Mr. Will. Yeah, Michael said. Whatever happened to Mr. Will, the real ding-dong guy? Hmm, said Mr. Klutz as he stroked his chin. Men always stroke their chin when they're thinking, even if they don't have a beard. Nobody knows why. That's a good question, he said. I honestly don't know what happened to Mr. Will. That's when the weirdest thing in the history of the world happened. He heard a sound. 
Well, that's not the weird part. We hear sound all the time. The weird part was the sound was coming from above and outside. It was a muffled voice. And the voice was saying, hell, 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 hell. Mr. Klaus went to the window. It's coming from the wind, from the roof, he shouted. Follow me. We all ran out of his office and climbed up a secret principal staircase that only principals are allowed to climb on. Shh, whispered Mr. Klutz when he got to the door that opened up onto the roof. Don't make a racket, huh? Why would anybody want to make a racket at a time like this, I asked. Are there tennis courts up on the roof? Why is everybody always talking about tennis rackets? Shh, quiet, Arlo, said Andrea. Mr. Klutz opened the door to the roof with his secret principal key. We stepped out onto the roof. We were slinking around up there like secret agents. It was cool. Nobody said anything. You could hear a pin drop. Well, that is if anybody had pins with them. Who brings pins to school? That would be weird. But anyway, there was electricity in the air. Well, not really. If there was electricity in the air, we would have all been electrocuted. And that would have hurt. But it was really exciting. You should have been there. Suddenly, we heard that muffled voice again. Hell, hell, hell. We ran over to where the sound was coming from. And you'll never believe in a million hundred years what we found up on the roof. Mr. Will. Wow, everybody said, which is mom upside down. Mr. Will was tied to a chair. His white ding-dong uniform was dirty and his hair was all messed up. He had ice cream dripping down his face and there were popsicle sticks on the floor around him. Thank goodness you rescued me, he said. What, what happened, Mr. Will? Andrea asked as we loosened the ropes that were tied around him. It was horrible, say, Mr. Will, Mr. Will said. Dr. Carbles was mad at me for parking my truck outside the school every day and for playing the ding-dong jingle over and over again. So he and his goons brought me up here and left me here. And you've been here all week? asked Mr. Klutz. What did you eat? Ice cream, said Mr. Will. I had nothing to eat but ice cream for a week. Wait, what? We all looked at Mr. Will. Here's a, every, everybody looking at Mr. Will. You had nothing to eat all week except for ice cream, I asked. Yeah, said Mr. Will. And that's a bad thing, asked Ryan. Yeah, what's wrong with that, asked Michael. I'd give anything to eat ice cream all week, said Alexia. That sounds like a perfect week to me, said Andrea. I wish I was in your shoes, said Ryan. What did shoes have to do with anything? And why did Ryan want to put on Mr. Will's shoes? They would be too big. Ryan is weird. Only a grown-up would complain about having to eat ice cream all week. Grown-ups are weird. I could have died up here, Mr. Will shouted as we helped him to his feet. Sheesh. What a whiner. If you ask me, Mr. Will needs to chill. <laughs> well, that's pretty much what happened. Maybe Mr. Will will go back to his job driving the ding dong truck. Maybe Dr. Carl's will get thrown in jail for kidnapping him. Maybe they'll start making octopus flavored ice cream. Maybe we'll start watching our P's and Q's instead of the other letters. Maybe a fish tank will come rolling down the street. Maybe Mr. Will is going to shoot soft ice cream out of a hose on the ding-dong truck and spray Dr. Carble's tank with it. Maybe Ryan will start eating dried mush for lunch every day. Maybe it's true that ice cream wakes up your brain. Maybe people will stop talking about tennis rackets. Maybe elementary school will become a normal school someday. But, and read the last line with me, it won't. B, easy. We did it.
book is done. We finished eight books, you guys, you and me together. I think you deserve a round of applause. Okay, so um, on Monday, we're going to start a new book. It's going to be Miss Newman Isn't Human. It's really fun. You're going to love it. And, uh, oh, I'm going to do a bonus read aloud tomorrow, Saturday, 2 o'clock, same place, same time. Um, uh, it's a really interesting story that I wrote with an 11-year-old girl. And it's you can't get it at any bookstore. You can't, uh, you, you're just going to have to listen to me read it to you. So, so come back tomorrow, okay? Uh, so let's do our uh, joke of the day. You ready for the joke of the day? Here it is. <clears throat> what does bread do on vacation? Hmm? What does bread do on vacation? It pretty much loafs around. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thanks to Josh Solman and Ryan Cunningham for our theme song. And here it is. <laughs> All right, you guys. See you tomorrow. And then for a new book. <laughs> That's my work for the day.